how do I know that the chamber that I'm about to go into is clean and safe, considering the fact that another patient just came out a few minutes ago? So today we're gonna cover the details about the sanitary conditions and the cleanliness in and around the chamber environment. And we're gonna cover this in a few different sections. We're gonna talk about the air part of the system. We're gonna talk about the oxygen part of the system. And then we're gonna talk about the physical equipment itself, the chamber, the mattresses, the pillows, etc. So on chambers that pressurize with air, we have to make sure, number one, where's that air coming from? Is that air being purified before it's going into the chamber? And then once it's in the chamber, is there any way of recycling or cycling that air? And so on our equipment and for the chambers and clinics that we support, we run air through oilless compressors. We use oilless compressors because that almost completely eliminates the likelihood of any carbon monoxide buildup. We take that air through a multi-stage filtration process which is going to medically purify that air so that we know that the air that this patient is getting has no carbon monoxide and is purified from all possible toxins, including dust, mold, and fumes from things like carpets, paints, or anything else. So we're driving this medically purified air into the chamber, and that air is what's building up inside that chamber, helping to create the pressure. At some point, that chamber is gonna to get to the pressure that we wanted it to, and at that moment, air will start to purposefully leak out of the chamber and so that the air coming into the chamber matches the amount of air leaving the chamber. And that's what helps keep the chamber at the treatment pressure for the duration of the therapy. It's called a flow system. Air is flowing the entire time. As long as air is flowing the entire time, typically at a minimum of 100 liters per minute, we are pushing purified air into the chamber and then we are actually cycling and recycling the air out of the chamber, keeping the air fresh the entire time that that patient is inside that chamber. Some patients might just be getting that air. And if they're getting that air, we know that they're getting clean air for their treatment. In many cases, we will be driving oxygen into that chamber separately. And when we deliver oxygen, we might be delivering oxygen through a variety of different mask setups or potentially through a hood setup. In either case, the oxygen that's flowing is flowing from the outside of the chamber directly to that patient's either nose and mouth or entire head and face through either a mask or a hood. And that mask or hood is that patient's mask or hood. In other words, every patient gets their own mask or every patient gets their own hood, ensuring the fact that the oxygen in the air that they're breathing through their device is for them alone. We're not sharing masks or sharing hoods. And that's to make sure that they're not being exposed to anyone else's air or germs, et cetera. And then the third piece is the cleanliness of the physical equipment. So with every session, the pillowcases are changed, the mattress sheets are changed, and the chamber is wiped down. In our office, we use a mixture of hydrogen peroxide. And as we know, hydrogen peroxide virtually kills everything. We don't like to use harsh chemicals. We don't like to use chemicals that have strong odors, primarily because in the chamber environment, number one, you will absorb everything inside that chamber at higher rates because of the pressure. And so we wanna use very, very clean, very, very pure, and very, very safe chemicals when we're dealing with cleanliness. Hydrogen peroxide obviously is a very safe cleaning tool to use. It also doesn't leave any residual coating and it certainly doesn't destroy any of the materials on either a soft chamber or on a hard chamber. Some clinics also like to use ozone. Ozone is also a very strong and powerful and safe antimicrobial substance. And you can run ozone into the chamber and that could help to also reduce or even eliminate any potential microbes that might be inside that chamber. Now, in a hard chamber, generally speaking, it's completely safe to use. In a soft chamber, we've never seen it damage the material, but we have seen it leave a yellowing on the inside of that chamber, which aesthetically is just not pleasing. So I don't recommend using ozone on a soft chamber, but if you wanted to use ozone on a hard chamber, you certainly could. As long as the equipment is providing medically pure and filtered air, and we're delivering oxygen through individual devices, and we're keeping pillows, mattresses, and surfaces absolutely clean, not to mention a high oxygen environment of being inside the chamber is antimicrobial all by itself, we can certainly ensure that we are maintaining and creating a very safe environment for each consecutive patient to enjoy their time inside the chamber, get all the benefits that they're trying to get, without worried about increased risk of other microbes from other patients in previous sessions throughout that day. I hope this information is helpful and we'll see you again next time. So whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath 
or an acupuncturist or a DO or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way. And that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com and uh, right across the, the top, you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are gonna be.